Do you find that the lens on the X100V is a little bit too narrow and you want to go a lot wider? Well, let me show you what I've been doing to get a little bit wider on my X100V shots. And to be totally fair, this uh, technique is quite a simple one um, and it works quite well uh, with the, uh, you know, the Nissi filter set that we discussed in uh, last week's video. Um, and the Arca Swiss uh, L bracket. So, um, so one of the issues that I've found so far with the X100V, especially for landscape photography, is you really sometimes you need to get a little bit wider um, to show all the different aspects of the landscape and really um, kind of show off um, some of the features. Uh, but given the, I guess, the narrowness um, of this lens, uh, being a 23 millimeter, 35 equivalent, uh, this can be a struggle sometimes, um, a challenge, uh, and sometimes you can get it uh, perfect, but sometimes you just need something a little bit wider to, to, uh, to get the rest of the scene in. So let's have a look how we might be able to manage that today. Okay, so to start, let's just keep it in landscape mode. Um, and what we're going to do here is I've dropped an ND filter and also a graduated ND filter, just to kind of bring that sky down a little bit so it doesn't overexpose. Um, and I'm just gonna take a shot now of just, you know, the scene and you know, what we can um, kind of you know, get from uh, just using the lens as it is. No um, attempt to try and widen it um, and get more in it. So let's have a look what that looks like now. Yeah, so as you can see from the scene, I probably didn't pick uh, the best scene to, to try this on because the, the standard 23 millimeter lens is actually working quite well. Uh, we've been able to get enough in the scene to make it semi-interesting and, and make it work. So um, yeah, so probably not the best scene to have tried this on. I should have done something a little bit more bland that needed the um, peripheral um, parts of the landscape, you know, to really make it work, but that's okay. We can still show you, you know, how this actually kind of is, is gonna work. So that was the shot kind of straight on with the lens. So what I'm gonna do now is just take the camera off the base and I'm going to put it into portrait orientation. And the reason I'm doing this is we're gonna do a panorama, but we're gonna stitch it. Um, and a lot of people would, you know, kind of expect that you would keep it in landscape and just kind of go one shot, two shot, three shots. But the best way to do it I've found um, is by putting it into portrait orientation and then doing the same thing, and I'll tell you why. Alrighty, so why is it that I put the camera into portrait rather than keeping it in landscape orientation? And the reason for that is, if you think about um, the sensor, uh, the sensor being this way, if you just take one shot like this, another shot, and another shot in landscape, um, what you're gonna do is you're not gonna have a lot in the top or the bottom of the screen uh, of, of the photograph um, to play with. So by putting it into landscape orientation, what you can do then is you're actually getting a longer, uh, sorry, a higher um, image. And by stacking them then, you're gonna have more in the foreground and then more in the sky to play with. And it'll also help you when you crop the image in post. Uh, Cause it's very hard to get a perfectly straight image. Um, so when you stitch these together, there's generally some cropping involved. So you generally lose a little bit on the top and maybe a little bit on the bottom. So that's why it's really good to use it like this. Um, so then you can get kind of more in the shot. And the other reason to do this is it's just maximizing your resolution. So by having it up in the portrait lens, uh, portrait orientation, what you're doing there is you're maximizing the amount of resolution that you're going to be able to stitch together. If you've got a nice kind of skinny long landscape, you might only need two shots, but using the portrait orientation, you might stitch one, two, three, four, up to six kind of shots. So you're gonna maximize the uh, resolution so if you are printing your images or want something a little bit larger, you've got a hell of a lot of image to play with. Okay, so how do we stitch a landscape? So it's relatively simple. What you wanna do is make sure that your uh, camera is level and you can do this by using the uh, horizon level on the uh, camera. Uh, once you've got that level, you wanna try and find your starting point. So let's say we go to this point here. You'll then want to secure the camera I generally pop it onto self timer for two seconds. 
and then take my first shot. Now I'm just going to focus kind of midway into the photo. It'll count down the two seconds and then it'll take the photograph. Okay, so you've taken your first photograph, so what do you want to do next? Um, what I would do is I would put your camera into manual focus. Um, that way um, this, the focus point stays at the same spot uh, because the last thing you want to be doing is stitching a photo in post that has a, uh, the first photograph has the focal point in the right place. The second one uh, has got the tree in the foreground um, and then the third one has something in the background. So you're going to have kind of um, uh, mismanaged um, focal areas. So it's, it's just not going to look right um, and you're going to have different parts in and out of focus and it's just not going to work out. So put it into manual focus now. Um, you've taken your first shot. So now I just release the plate here and then I just turn it just slightly. Okay, now typically when I'm moving the camera to take my second shot, this is the first shot still on the screen then. So what you want is about a, um, a third overlap in the photo. Uh, it just helps with the stitching process later. Um, so re again, release the bottom plate here and then we're just gonna move it to there. So you'd notice that that first part of the hill was in the first shot and it's still gonna be in the second shot and it's just gonna show a little bit of overlap so the uh, processing uh, tools in uh, Lightroom will be able to notice that and actually stitch these together and know that they're the same part of the image. So we're just gonna go ahead now and take that photograph. And really now you're just replicating the same step over and over again and depending on how wide you wanna go. So then releasing the plate again, going to about there and you can see I've still got that bit of the hill in the mount, um, in, in the in the um, in the mid ground there and we've just got the mountain there on the other side so then taking the shot again and that's kind of it and really you're just replicating this now over and over again until you get the desired result and I guess that's why I felt compelled to share this with you because it's a fairly simple technique and a tool to help take your X100V shots from kind of a narrower point of view to something that really showcases, you know, the wider image. And I've taken a few different shots this morning. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually play those now. I'll play the original um, as it was shot with the X100V and then I'll do the panoramic version. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm just gonna shoot around the area here because the light is extremely nice this morning and take some more photos. So we've got the loop in here in the foreground, nice little bit of water cascading through the midground into the mountains there in the background. Dropping that graduated ND filter in is just darkening off the sky and making it look quite dramatic. So the lens is actually you know, wide enough for this uh, purpose. So it loopens in the foreground, little tiny bit of water and then just mount iron there in the background. So what I'm gonna do with this one, uh, just because we're so close to the subject, um, is I'm actually going to focus stack this one. So I'm going to focus on the lupin kind of right there in the foreground. And again with the self timer on, and let's check that it's on. It's such an integral part of it. We'll take that photo there in the foreground. We'll then take one and you have to be extremely careful with the foregrounds. Another one there. And I'm just going to work my way up the image just to ensure 
everything's in focus. Two filters in there i've got the um, graduated nd filter and then also a neutral density filter so one to darken it off fully and the other one just to darken the sky in there so i'm just changing it to across now and just going to shoot this little tree in the foreground here I'm just crouched underneath that tree um, and I'm going to use some of the uh, kind of leaves up in the top section here the nice reflections in the foreground and it's just going to lead us straight down into those mountains in the background so yeah quite happy with this composition um, some nice light um, so we'll take this shot and we'll keep moving and see what else we can find tripod with this one. Alrighty, well uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me on another photographic adventure. Um, I hope you've, um, you know, you've picked up a few tips today. Um, something that I just really like doing. I know it's worked really great for me in terms of just getting a little bit wider you know, with the X100V um, and using these filters as well. And if you missed that episode, um, I will pop a link in the description just around the new, uh, oh, it's not new, uh, the, my new <laughs> Nissi filter set. For the X100V, a great little addition to uh, to my kit. So uh, look, if you did like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, just pop them down in the comments. Uh, but for now, it's time for me to go grab a coffee and a bite to eat. Excellent. Have a great weekend, guys. See you next week.